After the cooking festival was announced to begin, the host immediately introduced the 100 contestants participating in this competition. First was the reigning champion from last year, the top-ranked king of cooking, Zaz. Next was the sixth-ranked chef who captured the hearts of all sweet-toothed girls, Ennio. Following them were the fourth-ranked curry king, Damala, then the fifth-ranked medicinal cooking specialist named Yuda. The 14th-ranked Wabutora and the 17th-ranked Live Bear appeared in sequence, standing out among the chefs was the second-ranked female chef, Setsuno. Without keeping the audience waiting for long, the eagerly anticipated figure, the head chef of the gourmet restaurant ranked 88th. Kamatsu quickly stepped out to cheers and applause. Seeing Kamatsu looking worried, Toriko encouraged him wholeheartedly, boosting Kamatsu's confidence. Meanwhile, the Bishikokai group had also prepared to execute their plan. The host finished introducing the chef's names, while Rin continued diligently with her task of taming her beastly creatures. Mansam and Shigematsu were worried about the Bishikokai's plot. At the cooking stadium, Patch was invited to the stage to give the opening speech. After observing the contestants in front of him, he warned them to ensure food safety and hygiene during cooking, or they would risk receiving embarrassing one-star reviews from the media. Kamatsu. Upon hearing this, looked bewildered, and Toriko shouted from a distance to boost Kamatsu's spirits. After a speech full of threats and assurances for the safety of the competition, Patch was applauded by the audience and stepped down. Wabutora, the oil king, came to greet Kamatsu as he had heard of him for a long time. He quickly shook Kamatsu's hand in greeting, leaving a handful of cooking oil in Kamatsu's hand. The elder chef Kama also came to thank Kamatsu for his contributions to the world. Then, other contestants like Speed King Tun and Chef Naramaro came to greet everyone. An elderly hermit chef, radiating an aura of wisdom, appeared to deliver a lecture. Kamatsu took the opportunity to ask for autographs from each person. The top two chefs stood apart, observing the other chefs conversing with each other. Zaz expressed his desire to retire after the competition, but Setsuno disagreed, believing that as long as people still eat, there will always be a need for cooking. Neither of them was willing to yield the title of super chef. When they faced off against each other, the audience erupted with excitement. The members of the G7 group were also eagerly anticipating the competition. Meanwhile, as Kamatsu was still fretting, the host quickly introduced the format of the first round. Contestants would have to participate in physical activities such as swimming, racing, and endurance running before cooking. This round would eliminate half of the initial contestants. They would have to swim across Takoyaki Island to collect ingredients. Next, they would have to run through various mountains and collect cooking utensils at the foot of Okana Hill. The fastest person would choose the best ingredients. In this situation, Kamatsu was in danger, but Toriko still had faith in him, while the youth zebra remained calm and continued eating recklessly, ignoring everything. At this point, the competition had begun at the referee's command. Tina was right by the rice coast, ready to report and even prepared a mouthful of raw rice to stave off hunger. Contestants on the shore were warming up their limbs, while Kamatsu worried about being eliminated from this round of the competition. Meanwhile, Toriko and Zebra remained calm, competing to see who could eat faster. Mr. Manchi, clumsy as ever, stumbled as he stepped onto the stage, accidentally squeezing the trigger of his gun, causing everyone to immediately dive into the sea and swim to the island to gather cooking ingredients. The audience above cheered and encouraged them. At this moment, a mysterious young man who was still asleep suddenly woke up, realizing that he had missed the competition. While other chefs were swimming like athletes, Kamatsu swam like a child learning to swim. However, many people, both familiar and unfamiliar, attentively watched and cheered on the contestants. Currently leading was Mami, ranked 29th, known for being the head chef of a underwater restaurant, hence the menu consisted mostly of fresh sashimi. However, Wabutora, the oil king, used his unique skill to run on water, taking the lead with his deep-fried menu. The contestants behind were still in hot pursuit, with Kamatsu struggling to keep up. Both Sani and Toriko admitted defeat as they realized Kamatsu couldn't swim. Just as Kamatsu was about to sink, Zebra suddenly created a sound buoy to help him. Kamatsu was relieved to swim back to shore easily, but then Setsuno appeared. She thought Kamatsu was drowning and came to rescue him. Seeing her standing on the water, Kamatsu was surprised and greatly admired Setsuno. The truth behind this technique was that before one foot sank, Setsuno immediately lifted the other foot, moving so fast that others couldn't see it. Seeing that Kamatsu was okay, she gracefully glided across the water's surface. Feeling that this was a fair competition, Kamatsu requested Zebra to remove the sound buoy so he could rely on his own strength. Zebra, though indifferent on the surface, still cheered him on wholeheartedly. Meanwhile, a mysterious figure observed the competition from above with a sinister smile. Kamatsu struggled while swimming. While Wabutora used the buoyancy of oil to ride the waves effortlessly, yet Setsuno easily surpassed him. Behind them, top-ranked chef Saws and Speed King Tun chased after. Despite swallowing countless gulps of seawater, Kamatsu remained determined to swim to the finish line. Setsuno reached the first destination and leisurely selected the best ingredients for cooking. 
Tina, beside her, explained about the bicycles prepared for transportation. The contestants had to use them to transport their chosen ingredients for cooking, and they quickly arrived to make their selections. As the competition heated up, suddenly, on top of a tall building, a mysterious figure with a sinister smile appeared. This person had decided to reveal themselves, and furthermore, he could stand at a 90-degree angle to the building. The host quickly introduced the newcomer, he wasn't a Spider-Man but indeed the final contestant in this culinary competition. The demon-faced chef named Tengu Brunch, ranked third in the world, emerged. All the audience members were extremely excited by his appearance. Brunch took a deep breath and shouted loudly, I will defeat everyone. Zebra remained silent, but everyone knew his style, less talk, more action, the hallmark of Zebra, the gourmet emperor. Brunch immediately leaped onto the table of the four heavenly kings, facing Zebra directly. Zebra mentioned a contestant named Kamatsu, calling him his companion and claiming that he would humble Brunch's arrogant attitude. However, something seemed amiss. Kamatsu wasn't actually Zebra's companion. Brunch declared his intention to defeat Kamatsu, but the four heavenly kings swiftly responded, cautioning against arrogance and not underestimating others. After the exchange, Brunch dashed off. Though he appeared arrogant, the four heavenly kings knew Brunch's true strength was not just empty boasting. After struggling with the sea, Kamatsu finally arrived at his destination, his body exhausted. In the distance, Brunch also arrived. Kamatsu admired Brunch, but upon seeing Brunch's physique, he couldn't help but notice how immature it seemed. Kamatsu acknowledged this observation, questioning how his culinary skills could compare to Brunch's. Kamatsu was genuinely participating in the cooking competition, given his tendency to seek autographs from top-ranked chefs whenever he encounters them. Sani angrily questioned why Kamatsu should seek the autograph of that arrogant guy. Brunch argued that the remaining ingredients were mere leftovers, but Kamatsu eagerly examined each ingredient, envisioning delicious dishes. At that moment, the ingredients seemed to illuminate with joy, happy to be chosen despite being deemed ordinary. Brunch proposed to help Kamatsu gather the remaining ingredients to create a unique dish. Despite the long journey ahead, Kamatsu and Brunch collaborated. Sunny was annoyed, but Toriko found the collaboration remarkable, appreciating Brunch's kindness. Despite his forceful entry onto the table, Brunch managed to spill only glasses and bottles, ensuring the safety of the food on the plates and the drinks in the glasses. These actions made Toriko see Brunch in a different light, recognizing his kindness. Kamatsu and Brunch, both passionate about food, immediately bonded as if they had been longtime friends. This camaraderie showcased the harmony among exceptional chefs. The journey to the cooking island is now jammed with a 120 km traffic backlog, estimated to take 20 hours to clear. These giraffe deers are genetically engineered creatures derived from grass-eating deer. They have strong vision and smell, and when they emit a sound, it signals potential danger. The atmosphere at the festival is tense, emotions running high. After cycling to transport ingredients, participants will carry them on a long run to the cooking arena, but the race doesn't end there. Our chefs will cook the chosen ingredients at the cooking arena, and their dishes will be tasted by the 7G7 judges. Only 50 out of the top 100 chefs will advance to the next round. The leading chefs pedal ahead, while others like Liebearer and Kairu follow closely behind. Bizarre food queen Kapuriko not only carries weight but also fights off obstacles and uses the spoils as ingredients. She's a strong girl indeed. Restaurant owner Odin Genshan deals with a wild boar, using recipes dating back generations. He decides to cook soup with the boar, following the traditions of his ancestors. Demon mice attack the chefs, but the poisonous chef Thailand swiftly defeats them with two strokes. Kamatsu pedals slowly, so Brunch pulls him along for speed. This is the real battlefield. Kamatsu's spirits must be soaring. In a flash, Kamatsu and Brunch catch up with the leading chefs. Brunch even sabotages the path to eliminate trailing chefs. This is the essence of competitive spirit, sometimes, cunning tactics make for a thrilling contest. The current top ranks reach the Kankatsu mountain area. They abandon their bicycles and start running, but the speed of these elderly folks is remarkable. Truly, they are top chefs of the planet. Tina is at the equipment station, where chefs choose cooking tools provided by the organizers within an hour. Chefs must quickly select the tools they prefer. Coco believes that the key to winning this round lies in selecting the right ingredients and cooking tools. Setsuno, Zaz, and Yuda are the first to arrive, breezing through the equipment station. One might have thought these three would reach the finish line first. But no, Brunch and Kamatsu arrive first. Brunch's victory seems to fuel his arrogance. 85 contestants complete the race, and the one who arrives at the finish line with Brunch is Chef Kamatsu. Zebra listens to Kamatsu's heartbeat, sensing his nervousness. Yet, the gourmet quartet still believes he'll be fine because cooking is his forte. Instead of choosing Milk's knife like Milk's second, Kamatsu opts for an ordinary one, surprising the audience and renowned chefs alike. Brunch questions Kamatsu why he didn't use Milk's knife. 
Komatsu honestly replies that he didn't bring it because brunch helped him with everything so far. Komatsu decides to use a regular knife to make up for his dishonesty. Komatsu leaves Milk's knife behind, demonstrating that his purpose here is not about winning or losing but about honesty. Brunch turns away, calling him foolish yet intriguing. The four heavenly kings and Milk second praise Komatsu wholeheartedly. Patch lets Komatsu know that he greatly admires Komatsu's actions, and he will score fairly. Upon hearing this, Komatsu's heart beats faster and becomes somewhat unstable. Komatsu gradually calms down and listens to the call of the ingredients. After some consideration, Komatsu chooses hardshell crabs. With just one knife skillfully wielded, he impresses even the top chefs. Concentrating on what he loves to do, Komatsu pays no heed to the disparaging remarks around him. Living true to oneself like Komatsu leaves no room for complaints. The dish is simple yet impressive, the crab shells resemble crispy fries. Setsuno introduces the dish Komatsu made for everyone. Komatsu's dish is called beach fried rice, and the G7 group hasn't tasted it yet, but Toriko is already salivating. All the ingredients Komatsu chose are not wasted, they are leftovers but exceptionally delicious. Next, the top chefs will showcase their innate talents. The first place in this round goes to none other than Setsuno, and Komatsu also successfully advances to the next round. Now, they will begin the second round, and the arena unfolds below with a gigantic scale brought up. The first match on the scale of death is Lucky Cuisine Chef Komatsu facing off against the Oil King Wabutora. The rules are as follows, the food on each side of the scale is equal in quantity. Chefs must quickly cook the ingredients and offer them to the audience for tasting. If the quantity of ingredients on one side decreases, the scale will rise, otherwise, it will fall. Since Wabutora uses the oil that Komatsu found, he wants Komatsu to use Milk's knife to compete with him. While Komatsu is still contemplating, Wabutora starts cooking with oil. In no time, Komatsu's scale drops. In a critical moment, Komatsu decides to cut the ingredients with Milk's knife. The elderly are very picky about fried food. And Wabutora's fried dishes make them eat easily and happily. Sani sees that Wabutora is spurred on by Komatsu's talent. Now, Komatsu is getting closer to the flames. Komatsu struggles to lift the ingredients into the oil pan and fry them with a large spoon, surprising the audience and viewers. It's a giant beef steak. Everyone thought Komatsu wouldn't cook it through, but after a while, it's done because Komatsu is very close to the fire. Thanks to the learning and training process with Toriko throughout the journey. The supersized beefsteak pieces are cooked in an instant. Komatsu learns not only from Toriko but also from Koko. His composure was evident from the gourmet casino. The cheese slowly melts and flows over the steak. It's both cooking and performance art, and both sides of the scale are equal because they handled all the ingredients. Komatsu's beefsteak dish dominates entirely because he uses only natural fish oil, while Wabutora's ambition led him to mix second-rate oil with fish oil to speed up cooking, which backfired. Today, the oil genius Wabutora learned a valuable lesson. Chef Komatsu is the winner of this round, and Wabutora acknowledges what Sunny said about Komatsu is correct. They shake hands happily like two friends. Komatsu's battle has boosted the spirits of Brunch, Setsuno, and Zaz on this side. Setsuno, Zaz, and the other powerful chefs easily secure victories. Only 25 chefs remain for the next round, where 16 will be selected to aim for the championship. In the next round, the rules are simple, the ingredients are on the islands, and a helicopter carries Tina to provide direct information about the islands the chefs will choose to participate in. This competition is to test the chefs' skills and their culinary luck. Each chef will choose their favorite island and use their skills to cook the best dish. For this contest, everyone will choose a companion to start with. For Komatsu, the companion he chooses is none other than Toriko. At the Maiden Island, Setsuno chooses Nono as her companion. Despite the cute appearances of the creatures there, Setsuno doesn't hold back and swiftly defeats them with a single kick. Toriko and Komatsu's group decides to choose Gourmet Island, where everything from the grass to the rocks is gourmet food. Toriko's appetite leads him to consider eating a flower, but Komatsu stops him because if the ingredients are consumed before cooking, they will be disqualified from the competition. On the other side, Koko was chosen by the poison cooking expert Tylan as a companion, while Tina has to go to Gigan Island to report because the unexpected companion of brunch turns out to be Zebra. Because both of them are equally temperamental, they end up fighting each other immediately, with Tina, on the side. Getting shaken. Elsewhere, Sani is chosen as the companion of medicinal cooking Yuda. They venture to find ingredients on the plant island because Sani fears encountering ugly creatures. Meanwhile, top-ranked chef Zaz selects Zong as his companion, simply because he opts for someone significant and doesn't feel the need for a teammate. Zong, unsure about his talents, is astonished when he sees the island they've chosen is inhabited by a giant squid. 
It tries to attack Zaz, but he easily subdues it with a single strike. At this point, both Komatsu and Toriko have harvested a lot of ingredients, but the problem is that the ingredients keep replenishing every time they pick them. With this situation, Komatsu won't be able to complete the challenge. After a while, many contestants have finished their part of the competition. The first to present his dish is Thailin, whose poisonous shrimp easily captivates the judge's palates. Now, only Komatsu and Brunch have not returned. Tina, on the scene, reports that Brunch and Zebra are fighting, and unfortunately, many unfortunate creatures on the island have died because of their battle. Sensing time is running out, Brunch quickly brings them back to cook. Meanwhile, on the other side, Mansam is still keeping an eye on the Bishakukai, while Zin has to watch the festival through his phone. Meanwhile, Komatsu and Toriko feel discouraged because they can't harvest all the ingredients on the island. Feeling they won't finish on time, Komatsu suggests Toriko eat all the ingredients they've collected. Though he says so, Komatsu is inwardly tormented, making Toriko lose his appetite too. Komatsu holds back his emotions, urging Toriko to eat while enjoying the scenery. Toriko, trying to comfort him, starts analyzing the nature of the plants around them and discovers that the soil above is incredibly rich. When rain falls, the water seeps through the ground, blending with the island's ingredients and flowing into the sea. The seawater holds the essence of the entire island, and the creatures that can absorb it are oysters. If they catch one, it's like obtaining the essence of the entire island. Without many words, Toriko immediately dives into the sea to catch oysters. In no time, he finds a massive oyster as big as the island itself, with an incredibly tough shell that even Toriko's flying fork technique can't break. Provoked, the oyster charges at Toriko, intending to ram him, but Toriko remains calm, making gestures before the meal and then unleashing ten incredibly powerful punches that shatter the hard shell, revealing the succulent and nutritious oyster meat. Finally, Komatsu uses the oyster meat to treat the judges, squeezing lemon over the meat to enhance the flavor. Not only that, but the fried oyster dish also garners praise from everyone, with Toriko continuously eating until Komatsu has to remind him to eat less if he doesn't have a girlfriend. Brunch is extremely confident with his monster meat dish, while Zebra just wants to eat the meat plate. Brunch hurriedly brings the plate to the judges for tasting. Finally, the list of the 16 contestants who passed the third round is announced, luckily including Komatsu. However, unfortunately, he will have to face the top-ranked chef saws in the next round. After that, the list of other pairs is also announced. At this time, the giraffe and Mansam sense the impending danger, and all four heavenly kings are ready to face the Bishakukai organization. The 16 faces who made it through the third round have emerged, but the danger named Bishakukai is approaching. Meanwhile, inside the waiting room, Komatsu faces immense pressure because he is considered a strong candidate for the championship. At this moment, he meets an old friend, Yuemi, and the two friends embrace warmly after a long time. Yuemi praises Komatsu's honesty and fair play in the competition, which moves him to tears. Yuemi also cries with him because shared tears are joyful. Komatsu quickly asks about his old friend Otaki, but Yuemi is unsure of his whereabouts. Toriko, Sani, and Koko appear, and Komatsu introduces them to Yuemi. Seeing Toriko and everyone being so close to Komatsu, Yuemi admires his friend a lot. Komatsu explains that Yuemi is the chef of Nakam Gourmet School and is acquainted with Ms. Samire. While they're chatting, Yuemi is called away by a bodyguard because he's now the chef for Chairman Moi, a millionaire and owner of a famous gourmet travel conglomerate, who seems to be plotting something very secretive. On the other side, Brunch is recharging his body with energy, sensing that something unpleasant is about to happen. Toriko also feels like he's being watched by someone. The host announces that the showdown between Komatsu and the top chef saws will begin in a few minutes. Sani and everyone encourage Komatsu with all their might, while Toriko believes that he will definitely defeat Zaz. Hearing those words made Komatsu very happy and filled with confidence as he stepped out onto the tournament stage. As soon as Komatsu left, the Toriko team immediately returned to a state of readiness, sensing the imminent danger. Outside, the host announced the beginning of the match between the newly famous chef Komatsu and the world-renowned chef Zaz. Zaz had won 14 consecutive victories in 14 culinary festivals. Zaz told Komatsu that he would compete to his fullest without giving Komatsu any leeway. The host introduced the rules of this tournament, the two chefs would have to cook in a completely dark room. They had to rely on their senses and experience to cook, as even a small mistake in the cooking process would affect the quality of the dish. Komatsu and Zaz entered the dark room, with darkness surrounding them. Komatsu had to grope his way through the darkness to find the kitchen and ingredients. Meanwhile, Zaz had already started cooking. Komatsu had to bend down and grope further. While concentrating, he suddenly felt he had caught something, but then a terrifying heat and glowing red eyes appeared in the darkness. Toriko outside also sensed danger. At this moment, outside the festival, the Bishakukai forces immediately mobilized their monsters to attack Mazam's giraffes, causing their heads to fall. 
In the sky, countless GT robots appeared, along with other monsters, attacking the stadium and key areas on the island. Their purpose was to eliminate all the chefs present. At this moment, Starjun appeared before Komatsu, causing Toriko to be extremely furious. Outside the stadium, the giraffes reared up, transitioning to attack mode, continuously emitting energy beams from their mouths to destroy the invaders. Nazim also used electricity to activate his muscles, transforming into a giant for battle, as the war had officially begun. Outside, the Bishikukai monsters and GT robots had to face off against Mansum's defensive forces, causing the audience watching the cooking festival to feel extremely worried. Inside the arena where Komatsu was competing, he was seized by Starjun, and fear was evident on his face. Despite his efforts, Komatsu couldn't escape. Zebra created sound waves from a distance to protect Komatsu, while Koko transmitted deadly toxins through Zebra's sound waves to Starjun's hand, but he easily neutralized them. Sunny above used his senses to try to bind Starjun, but it was ineffective. He ignited a blue flame, burning both his senses and the area where Komatsu was competing. The monsters on this side have arrived, and the people are running in panic. The sous chefs of the Bishikokai appear, the chefs ready to fight. Brunch promises to deal with them all for ruining the epic tournament. In the midst of the dangerous situation, Toriko also steps forward behind Starjun to rescue Komatsu. Both exchange intense gazes, creating a significant disturbance. Inside, the chef Zaz, left unprotected, has been defeated, surprising Setsuno greatly. Toriko swings his leg, creating a giant blade flying towards Starjun with great destructive force, but luckily, Zebra creates a sound barrier to protect the audience. Then Toriko kicks on the other side, creating a flying fork that surprises Koko and Zebra. Koko starts using his power to shoot poison bullets at the monsters in the sky, but suddenly they are stopped and sucked into a giant vacuum tube. It's Grinpatch, the king of odd eats. Who even considers Koko's poison as a delicacy? Sani, protecting Komatsu, suddenly has a giant crab claw cut off a chunk of his hair. It's Tommy, making Sunny horrified by this insect-like creature's ugliness. Sani, disgusted, turns his hair yellow, resembling a super scion to fight Tommy. The monsters gradually attack the people, but an electric surge flies to destroy the giant monsters, led by Brunch and other top chefs forming a battle team. After a series of continuous attacks from Toriko, Starjun remains steadfast as if nothing has happened. The sky is now filled with the creatures of the Bishikukai. During the journey hunting the puffer whale, Toriko experiences fear induced by Starjun. Toriko asserts his determination to protect all the chefs, especially Komatsu. Toriko grabs Starjun and delivers a nail punch, followed by another punch, sending Starjun flying far away. Starjun realizes that Toriko can now unleash powerful punches without sweating. Toriko claims he can punch all day without fatigue and then rushes to deliver another punch to Starjun. Starjun decides it's enough, unleashing his killer intent and delivering a punch to Toriko, knocking him into a pile of rubble. The GT robots replicate in overwhelming numbers, along with countless monsters outside. Rin and Mazum try to defend, but Mazum has lost control due to being drugged in hopes Rin will leave as he can't control himself and might do something terrible. Everything in the arena is destroyed, and the festival has ended. Brunch approaches Komatsu, surprised that someone as weak as Komatsu hasn't fled. He advises Komatsu to escape because capable chefs will fight here. Brunch creates lightning to disperse the approaching monsters. Live Bearer and Wabutora attack fiercely, proving that even chefs can fight fiercely. As Rin runs, she releases a sleep-inducing gas at the monsters, made from the Lazy King ingredient. Some monsters are unaffected, so Rin prepares her laser sword for attack. The showdown between the four heavenly kings, the chefs, and the Bishikukai will unfold in the next episode. Please stay tuned. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, like, share, and comment your opinions. Thank you for watching.